Hey guys, what's going on? Today, we're going to take a look at this knife. This is, I'm doing kind of what I call throwback videos. So I'm going to review some of my older knives. Um, this is the Riot Wave. You can still find these on the used market occasionally. Occasionally. Uh, they're not real easily found, but they are out there. Um, this is one of Riot's first knives, really, when they very first became a company. Um, great little knife. Well, it's not a little tiny. Uh, speaking of that, let's do some size comparisons to regular household items. There is your Riot Wave pocket knife. I'm going to zoom out just a little, little tiny bit. Here it is next to a roll of Teflon tape. Here it is next to a Sharpie pen. So as you can see, it's not a very small, small knife. Here it is next to a Bic lighter. So not a tiny knife, but uh, really nice anyway. So um, here it is next to some other knives. Here it is next to this old standard 4Max Scout. Here it is from Cold Steel, this one. Here it is next to a Cold Steel Tough Light Mini. So as you can see, it's kind of right in between there. It's really a standard knife size, as you'll see when we get into the more specifications. Here it is next to a Spyderco Paramilitary 3. So, uh, handle size is almost the same as the Para 3, but you get more blade and a little bit more cutting edge. And here it is next to the Spyderco Warncliffe Delica 4 S30V. All right, let's do some measurements so you can get a little bit more accurate. What we got going on here. Get this out of there. I believe this is like a three and a quarter inch blade, three and a quarter inch, uh, three and an eighth cutting edge, four and a quarter inch handle. And it is about a half inch thick. As you can see, it's an all titanium handle with like a bolster frame lock. It was kind of one of the first of one of these that you've seen around in a production knife anyway. And let's check the overall height. Not counting the flipper tab. It is about an inch and a sixteenth, maybe just a little bit more. Let's check the weight. Overall weight of this knife is 3.67 ounces, which is really good for its size. And we'll show you why here in a minute. So let's get down into the review of this knife. I bought this knife in about 2016, I think it was. Um, I got it from GP Knives. Uh, GP Knives was fairly new and they were having their day before Thanksgiving uh, or actually the Friday day after Thanksgiving sale, the Black Friday sale. And it was, this knife usually retailed for about $450. And I got it for like 50% off or something like that. And the very next day it was right back to $450. Um, it is titanium handles with all this kind of vertical or hard, what do you call it, angular line milling on there. And then it's got these overlays they're titanium that are anodized. There's some gold in there and some blue in there and anodized in the little squares. It is a nice rounded titanium handles. Nice rounded clip. The quality on this knife is excellent. It came with a zippered pouch and it came with extra pivot screws, extra body screws, extra bearings, um, of which I've only used one of these screws out of it because one of these kind of stripped out a little bit because at that time I didn't really know what I was doing when I was trying to take it apart and it was Loctite and I figured I could get it apart. The blade is kind of a little bit scratched up because I've used it a lot. I've tipped it once, 
It's like the very fine part of the tip. It's got a really nice tapered tip on it. It was super fine. It's not quite as fine as it used to be. The blade steel is M390, which at that time was a pretty new steel. I think this is like one of the first Chinese knives to use M390. If you look inside there, you can see that there's some heavy milling. I don't know if you can quite make that out. Let's turn it around like that. Maybe you can see it better. No, nope, I'll turn it like that. Oh, there you can see it inside there. It's heavy milling inside there is why it's so light for its size, even though it doesn't look like it'd be that light. Um, one of the very first sculpted titanium clips in a production Chinese knife. Uh, Riot was kind of the first one, really. And as you can see, everything is nice, chamfered, rounded. The detent on this knife is perfect. Um, your lockup, and what's it been? Nine years? Eight years? Eight years? Yeah, eight years. Seven years. Seven years. <laughs> Uh, seven years or eight years. I can't remember if I got this in 2016 or 2015. But anyway, as you can see, the lockup is still really good. It hasn't traveled all the way over. And there is some adjustment in that uh, stainless steel insert. The thing I like about it, though, is look, you can't even from the side see the insert. It's too bad to use such a big screw. But like I said, this is kind of an older knife and they were still learning some things. Um, bolster lock so you don't get any of that lock freeze from squeezing your lock bar the action on it is super smooth really good it was one of the very first knives that had um, uh, ceramic bearings and ceramic detent ball uh, which was really cool like I really like this knife the first time I saw this knife was on Nick Shabazz review and he compared it a lot to the Sheer Goroff Neon except the Neon was thinner ground and I believe that was his only complaint about this knife was it was ground a little bit thick and it is ground just a little bit thick behind the edge but it still sharpens up nice the M390 everything on it, the heat treat on it's really good everything about it's fine and that's really good uh, ergonomically it's basically a stick which is perfectly built for the human hand to hold you get some nice traction off of these overlays I kind of wish you didn't have these screw heads sticking through. Um, I know when Nick Shabazz did his review about these, he said that these are not really that fancy. Any old CNC operator can make these, but uh, I don't know to make them and to make them contoured. Uh, seems to me like it would be more difficult and they're so consistent and nice. So, and I like that they did it on both sides, which is really cool. You can see the milling also follows through on the clip. That's the same on the body. It has a nice big wide pivot screw. T8, uh, I think that's like a T10 or T12. Stop pin, the blade has a cup for the stop pin so it kind of wraps around it so that hasn't worn out. There's absolutely, I mean, we're talking years of heavy use of, I carried this knife for days and days and days in a row. Um, I don't carry it quite as much anymore because I've got, you know, other options. So, but um, I did carry it for a lot. And it has no blade play, no side-to-side -side play. It's just, it's great. It's great. I bet your Riot didn't even know that this knife was going to last this long. Probably my biggest complaint is that right there. Uh, they didn't have to do that. They could have just gave it a regular plain old backspacer without all that. And it probably would have been just fine. But they didn't. Um, I do like the fact that you cannot see a screw holding on the pocket clip. Again, one of the first knives to do that. That was a production knife that used to just be a custom thing. Uh, I don't know why this knife didn't take off. Well, I kind of do. I think Nick Shabazz kind of killed it a little bit. Um, he gave it a really good review, but then he said a few things that were kind of negative about it. And when you wield that kind of power, it can affect sales of things. Um, I really thought that this knife would be a lot more popular and that they would come out with a lot more different variations of it and stuff like that, but they just never did. Um, there's the Riot marking on the blade, stone wash blade. There's your M390. So, really good, really good. Can't feel the blade through the back. 
you tip those all the way to the end without being able to touch it. So that's really nice. Uh, the clip is excellent. It doesn't tear up your pants at all, even though it's on the texturing. Maybe a little tiny bit, but not as bad as like the old cold steels used to do. They just rip holes in your pants pockets. So it is captive on one side, which makes it nice. You don't actually need two, sc two screws to hold it together. So really good, really nice. So yeah, there it is. The Reout Wave, a throwback review of an older knife. Like I said, uh, if you watch like uh, some of the knife sales, like the Apostle P channel, every once in a while you see one of these on there. Not a lot, but every once in a while. So if you want to find one, you can find them on the used market occasionally. I have no idea what they sell for. I don't know if the price has gone up, down, stayed the same, whatever. I don't really, I'm not really one of those guys who collects knives for hoping that the sales prices go way up on them. Like, you know, the old guys used to do with the hinders, buy them off tables and then turn around and sell them for twice the price. So that is not me. And this knife will never be for sale or for trade. I like it so much. So, which is outlasted pretty much most of the rest of my pocket knives. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Anyway, um, I'll have more of these reviews to come. I got a couple other throwback knives that uh, some of them you still can buy. Uh, some of them you can't. And I'll come break them out and give reviews on them. And I'm going to start doing a series of fixed blade reviews coming up. Um, I still haven't figured out how I'm going to do a sharpening video. I'm working on that. And I've got other new to me knives anyway coming soon to show you guys. I got a very special edition knife coming very soon to show you guys, which is kind of cool. So look forward to that. Um, otherwise, I'm going to just try to keep rolling out videos and putting more content out there for you guys. Uh, I still haven't got a desk yet. <laughs> As you can see, I'm working on it, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. So anyway, get your kids, get your wife, get your family, get whatever person that you live with. Um, get outside, enjoy the outdoors, turn off that TV, get away from the news and all the garbage. Man, there's so much of that in the world today that we just don't need all that. So I hope you're having a good weekend. I hope you had a good Cinco de Mayo. Toad Sticker out.